Hey, in this series, we're using Chainlink functions to bring weather data into our smart contract. If you haven't been following along, there's a link to the full playlist in the description below. This video is gonna focus on the functions playground itself. So let's take a look at that now. All right, so here we have the Chainlink functions playground. It's at functions.chain.link slash playground. And what's really cool about this is it's a place to simulate the Chainlink functions call. So this will allow us to actually try out and iterate on our JavaScript code that's going to be sent to the distributed Oracle network. I've gone ahead and put some notes in here so that we can know what we need to actually create for this project. When it comes to making this call, we're going to take in the latitude and longitude as arguments from our smart contract. Uh, we're going to check and see if maybe one of them's missing. If it is, we'll use a default just to make sure that our smart contract works every time. We'll make an HTTP request to the Open Mateo API, and this will provide us with the results back for the temperature at that location that we've passed in with the latitude and longitude. We'll check to make sure that our API response doesn't have an error, and then we'll extract the temperature from that API response and return the temperature rounded as an encoded uint256 to our smart contract. So that's the basics of it. So how do we get going and get started with this? Well, the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to bring in the latitude and longitude from the arguments that we pass in. So we say let lat and long equal args zero and one. So these are going to be an array of values that are passed in through our smart contract. We'll see them when we look at the smart contract in another video. Then we have to check and make sure that we have both the latitude and longitude. If we don't, we'll use some defaults. So if we don't have our latitude or our longitude, we'll log a message that says, hey, we're missing one of them. And then we'll use some defaults for a location. Once we have that sorted, we need to actually make our HTTP request. And the way that we do that is with a functions.makeHTTP request call. We'll use this URL, which is the API for Open Mateo. Uh, we're asking for the current temperature at a specific latitude and longitude. And personally, I'm used to seeing things in Fahrenheit, so that's what we're using here. If you leave off the temperature unit uh, equals Fahrenheit here at the end, you'll get the results back in Celsius. All right, so we've got our API response that's done with this functions.makeHTTP request. Next, we'll need to check and see if there was any errors in our response. So we can do that by looking at API response.error. If there was an error, we'll log it and we'll throw a new error and just stop executing right there. But if there's not an error, then we'll need to extract the temperature from the API. We can do that by looking at the API response.data.current and then temperature underscore 2m. So this will give us the current temperature. With that temperature, we'll go ahead and log it out so that we can see it in our console log over here when we run this code. And finally, we will return that rounded as a uint256. Now, why do we need to round it? One thing to remember, when you're using Solidity, which is what this is going to be passed into, there is no concept of decimal places, or floats as they're commonly called. So we need to use integers. So I'm just gonna round it in this case, but you could handle it however you want it. All right, so we've got this all coded up and we're ready to go. And so we'll run it with no arguments at all, just to make sure it's working. We click run code. And you'll notice our output here, we have output type of uint256, that's what we're expecting. Our output is 74, so 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you'll notice we did get that error message log that we're missing our latitude or our longitude, so it's using defaults. And the actual result that was returned was 73.9, which if I do the math correctly, I think rounds to 74. So it looks like everything worked correctly. What if we didn't want to use the default latitude and longitude, we wanted to pass in our own? We'll notice if we look at our code here, we have args zero and args one. So that's two arguments. So we'll need to add an argument here and we'll pass in two values. So we pass in 18 and 66. Now remember, our current result is 73.9. If we run this code again with these arguments, we should see, hey, we got a different value, 72.9, because we're looking at a different place on the world, right? We're looking at a different location and we're getting a different response back. We also didn't have that error message. So with this, the code for our function is complete. We can copy this code out and actually use this in our smart contract, which is what we'll be doing in a following video.